My name is Russ, and this is my review of Warriors The Broken Code, Book 1, Lost Stars. This is my first review, so things may be a little awkward, uh, so please bear with me. Uh, oh, and there will be spoilers ahead for the whole book, so if you would, so if you would like a spoiler-free review, this is not for you. Anyways, the, the uh, story starts out with the prologue, which is from a StarClan Warriors point of view, Watching over our first protagonist, Shadowpaw, a Shadow Clan medicine cat apprentice and son of Tiger Star 2 and Dubwing, heading to the moon pool with his mentor, Puddle Shine. The mysterious Star Clan cat remarks how great events are coming and Shadowpaw will be at the center of it and how his name will be remembered for generations to come. For good or evil, it is yet to be seen. Uh, this is pretty good and short, very short, our shortest prologue ever. Uh, of the series for the series. Anyways, enter Shadowpaw's point of view. His deal is that he gets visions while having seizures, which is interesting. But he is the special one trope. If you're into that, he's basically the focal character for this book, and all the plot revolves around him. First thing we learn in this book is that Leafpool died between books. I know Squirrelflight's hope will deal with her death. But for such an important character in the series to just die between books just seems so wrong. Second thing we learn is that the moon pool is freezing over and the medicine cats can't contact Star Clan, which is our major conflict of the book. Uh, all the medicine cats freak out over no one being able to reach Star Clan. I remember in earlier books that they don't always get in contact with Star Clan every half moon meeting. But it looks like we're retconning that for added drama. Lovely. Anyways, uh, then we are introduced to our second protagonist, Rootpaw, a Sky Clan apprentice and son of Violet Shine and Tree. His sister is Needlepaw, and let me just say that I love that Violet Shine named her daughter after Needletail. I always like when characters are named after others. It really shows that the original characters had left an impact. Anyway. RuPaul's main thing is that he thinks his father is weird and desperately wants to be seen as normal. Which, surprise, surprise, we find out in the ending, he is not. We'll get to that. Anyways, RuPaul gets bullied by two older apprentices and he ends up falling through the frozen lake and starts drowning. What a way to start off with a POV character. Uh, comes to save the day is Bristlepaw our third protagonist, and our ThunderClan POV. She's the daughter of Ivy Pool and Fernsong. Her main thing is that she wants to be a warrior as fast as possible so that she can get together with her unrequited love, Stemleaf. She saves RuPaw, and RuPaw hero worships her for this and develops a crush on her. Shadowpaw has the seizure vision of Bramble Star and Tiger Star 2 fighting. There's no explanation for this, and it doesn't happen in this book, so we have that to possibly look forward to further down in this arc. For bravery in rescuing Rootpaw, Bristlepaw gets to take her warrior assessment early, and she fails, which is surprising because I don't think we've ever had a character do so before. It's different and refreshing. We learn that Mothwing has changed her atheist thinking and now acknowledges Starkhood exists, Yet, she doesn't know if their intentions are good or that their guidance is all that needed. It's nice that Mothwing finally is getting character development and I'm interested to learn more about her thinking, so hopefully we'll get more of this. Shadowpaw starts hearing voices in his head, which he doesn't question, and listens to them, and he sneaks down to the moon pool and gets stuck. He gets struck by lightning. He's freaking struck by lightning and nothing happens to him. Anyways, the voices give Shadowpaw a prophecy of sorts. There is darkness in the clans that must be driven out, which is about the lamest and vaguest prophecy I've ever heard. At the gathering, Jayfeather reveals that the moon pool is frozen over and their connection to Star Clan is lost. I would think that the medicine cats would only tell their leaders and keep it secret from the rest of the clan because the warrior because they would not want the warriors to lose hope or faith. But whatever, I guess. On with the plot. Shadowpaw reveals to the clans that he was struck by lightning, which they don't believe, surprise, surprise, and received a prophecy. 
The cats go back and forth on if they believe Shatterpaw or not. This is the first time we get a hint that something isn't quite right with Bramble Star. Bristlepaw takes her warrior assessment again and passes this time. She receives the name Bristlefrost, which is a cool name. She confesses to Stemleaf and gets friendzoned, Stemleaf revealing that he likes spot fur. Not many cats get rejected in this series, and it's interesting to hear about this time around. So another half moon meeting happens, and the medicine cats are all upset and worried about the loss of contact with Starclan. It is suggested that perhaps Starclan will speak to them now in signs, but Jay Feather rejects this line of thinking, and I'm left remembering that part of being a medicine cat is to interpret signs. Anyone remember the fire and tiger sign? Or the signs of Goose Feather saw? No? Just me? Okay. Anyways, Shadowpaw has another vision, and he sees images of several different cats, and a voice telling him that the clans have broken the code over and over, and because of the code breakers, every clan must pay. Which, uh, the list of code breakers isn't nearly as long as it should be because so many more cats have broken the code than is listed. Shatterpaw sneaks out to the moon pool again and talks to the voice about the code breakers and he realizes the voice is a Tom's. Which is a clue, I suppose, but, uh, there hasn't been a lot of hinting about who it is already. What is so frustrating is that Shadowpaw never questions his voice if it's Starclan or not. He just never questions that it's strange or weird. He just goes along with it. The voice predicts that Bramble Star will get sick. Bramble Star acts out of character and then he suddenly falls sick, like seriously deadly sick at the drop of a hat, which is weird and totally not natural, but okay. Bramble Star is acting weird again and declares that they must break through to Star Clan. So all the clans gather except for Shadow Clan at the moon pool. And their clever plan is to hit the moon pool with a big rock, which is hilariously absurd and is a funny imagery for all these cats trying to push a boulder. Anyway, they fail and the moon pool is completely frozen over. Tiger Star 2 brings Shadowpaw to Thunder Clan because the voice is told Shadowpaw how to treat Bramble Star. The cure make him worse. Squirrelflight denies his treatment. Shadowpaw has a vision of uh, fire destroying the clans, which I assume is metaphorical because we just had a fire not that long ago. Bramble Star gets, uh, has gotten worse and Squirrelflight finally accepts Shadowpaw's treatment plan. The treatment doesn't work and Bramble Star dies and he doesn't return back to life. They have a visual and gasp. Bramble Star comes back to life. Who would have guessed? Bramble Star calls the emergency gathering to discuss what happened to him and Shadowpaw's visions. Jay Feather reveals it to the whole gathering about Mothring's atheism. Jay Feather has been verbally aggressive this whole book, and he really needs Leaf Fool back to tamper his emotions. Anyways, it is just it is decided that Shadowpaw is their only way to contact Starkland now. Rootpaw, Needlepaw, Tree, and Violet Shine are having a family meeting which I really enjoy the concept of, and they decide if things get worse, they will talk and possibly leave the clans. And the book ends with Rootpaw seeing a ghostly form of Bramble Star and runs away while it asks for help. Which, uh, yeah. Rootpaw is special! Who would have guessed? He's not normal like he wants to be. Uh, anyways, uh, the bonus Barnes & Noble scene is about Jay Feather dealing with Leaf Pool's uh, death and his grief over it. It ends with a cute scene of Jay Feather seeing Leaf Pool and Star Clan with Holly Leaf. Holly Leaf and Leaf Pool finally getting along now that they're in Star Clan, and Jay Feather finally accepting Leaf Pool's death. And that's the book. Overall, I think the book is executed really well and is a great first book to an arc. I think Sheriff really outdid herself with the writing. All the uh, point of view characters are great and they're very interesting to read about even when there's not much going on with their character. And I look forward to book two, The Silent Thaw. Uh, if you liked this review, please leave a like. Um, and if you think I should re do reviews differently, leave a comment down below. And if you would like to, please support me on Patreon. 
I'm Russet Frost on there as well. And that's it. I'll see you next a video. So goodbye.